I, I, Charles Chukuma Sokudo, do solemnly swear the oath of office signaling an end to the era of Willie Obiano as governor of Anambra State after a constitutionally allowed two terms of four years. In his place, Governor Charles Soludo, a professor of economics and former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. He's wasted no time with pomp and pageantry associated with swearing in ceremonies and has hit the ground running with lined up meetings to commence his reign as governor. Within the next one week, the list of commissioners will be led before the House of Assembly. Tomorrow, we will head to Okoko in our local government area and pass our furniture and indemnity as we signpost our commitment to fundamental urban, urban regeneration, beginning with the greater Onesha metropolis. Governor Saludo reels out his plans he believes will transform Anambra State into a smart mega city. Top on the list, says, is an executive order suspending all revenue contracts operating in parks, markets, and roads. The plan will ensure Onicha, the commercial nav center of the state, is read of revenue touts. Consequently, as from tomorrow, the 18th March 2022, if anyone asks you to pay him or her cash as revenue to the government in the parks, markets and roads, such a person must be a thief. And market unions must also stop harassing the customers. A detailed plan rests on five key pillars. The first is law and order, and that is homeland peace and security. The second, economic transformation as Nigeria's next axis of industrial tech and leisure. And fourth is competitive and progressive social agenda to deal with education, health, youth, women, and vulnerable groups. And then governance, rule of law, and the rebirth of our value system. And finally, to aggressively tackling our existential threat posed by the environment. And that's towards moving towards a clean, green, planned and sustainable cities, communities and markets. For the professor of economics, he will aim at improving public sector investment, which he says is less than $100 million per annum. Saludo so says he will fix that broken trust between citizens and government through judicious use of taxes. For example, to effectively implement our ambitious agenda, <coughs> we need annual investment levels of about 25 to 30 percent of the state gross domestic product GDP and this will come to in dollar terms to like about 2.58 to 3.09 billion dollars. That's the level of investment you require to make here to make the kind of dent we need. And our current levels, our public sector investment is less than a hundred million dollars. The gap seems daunting but we are undaunted. The internally generated revenue of the state is barely 0.5% of the state GDP. And this presents enormous, immense opportunity as well as a threat in the context of a rentier culture where the social contrast and trust between the citizen and the government is broken. Dignitaries here are optimistic that the governor Saluda administration will focus on developing the southeastern states. Knowing his background, he will focus on the critical area of development, which is education, health, and pulling people out of poverty. And he emphasized this here because governance and government is about caring for the poor. We have not cared enough for the poor people. You could even see what is happening in the country today. Why the poor people are looking for food to eat, scarcity of bread, scarcity of diesel and everything. We are all preoccupied about the next election. That shouldn't be so. The high point of this speech is that no resource will be wasted. Every resource will be plowed into making the quality of life of the people of Anambra better. And that is really what governing is about. Um, I think a very, very critical part of this symbolic but very powerful statement. He is going to drive a vehicle produced in Anambra. The things that you get served here when you come will be things produced in Anambra. And part of the challenge of development in Nigeria is that we are the biggest consumers of the things that we don't produce. The expectations of India and Anambra are high. The big dreams of a glorious future reside in the hearts of millions of people for whom this mandate means everything. The coming months or years will determine if this colorful inaugural speech has been matched with corresponding actions. Abel. 
Ichikeme, Arroyo's News.